Hello and welcome to part one of my video tutorial on how I painted my Gene Stealer Patriarch here. I will probably at some point call him a Primarch, and I apologize. Uh, I'm normally a Space Marine player, so I have a tendency to think in terms of Space Marines rather than uh, the scum that they fight. So um, in this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction here and then I'm going to kind of just jump right into it. Uh, this video will be more of a explanation of technique rather than just a step-by-step, -step, here's how I painted each thing. Um, I firmly believe that this is a hobby of um, personalization and I myself learned how to paint through just trial and error and just practicing, practicing, and practicing. So I wanted to kind of give a tutorial that was less here's how you paint by numbers and more of an explanation of just how I went about doing this. Uh, in this first part of this video, I'm going to do an explanation on how I did mostly the carapace and the skin. Hopefully I get a little bit more focus here. I am um, kind of doing a really strange rig on how I have my camera set up currently. It is actually attached to my painting light which gives it a nice kind of even light, but I am using my iPhone 7. So the, the light captured and the video aren't the best, but I'll uh, work with what I got for now. But yeah, in this video, I'm just gonna focus mostly on the carapace slash skin. Uh, that's mainly to keep the video length kind of short. So this is not like a half hour or 45 minute video. This is something you can watch quick and rewind and fast forward through. So I wanted to give a quick introduction to myself. My name is Connor. I go by Connor underscore 187 on Reddit. And I go by Warhammer Diary on Instagram. Instagram is where I primarily, primarily post most of my work, mostly work in progress, mostly because Reddit doesn't really... Um, doesn't necessarily lend to that very well. You can easily get yourself in trouble for spamming if you're putting up too much work. So I primarily keep um, keep to posting daily updates on my Instagram. But uh, I've been painting probably about five or six years. Uh, it started probably my probably eighth grade or freshman year of high school. Originally, I was just painting to have something painted on the board. But as I got older, I started to enjoy the hobby more. And so I, you know, over time basically started off really bad. I mean, I, I wish I still had pictures of the models I painted because they were absolutely horrendous. Uh, five years later, I still paint badly. I'm just better at covering it up, essentially. So um, basically now I just paint as a purely a hobby. I do play now and then. I have two Space Marine armies that I'm working on. Uh, one pretty much finished, one just in the start. And I'm starting a uh, Adeptus Mechanicus army. So a lot on my plate, I have a tendency to buy a lot of models and struggle to finish them all. But I paint uh, in my spare time most of the time. And I generally do it just as an escape from every day. And it's a good therapy. It's nice to um, work on something and then have something completed. So that's me. If you have any more questions, I will be happy to answer them in the next part. In the next part, I will cover um, probably, ooh, I'm all over the place here. I will cover the claws here. Oh, focus for me. There we go. Um, I'll be covering the claws and probably a lot of the more smaller base detail. So, um, like I said, in this first part, I'm just going to go over the carapace here, how I did it. I'll go step by step on which paints I used and kind of a good technique to go for. And we'll go from there. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Um, I'm, I've not, I don't have much experience with doing this, so uh, bear with me. It's going to take me a while to kind of get into the groove of doing this. I do have a tendency to talk a little bit too much, so I'll try to cut down on that. I do also have a verbal tick of saying um quite a bit. Uh, for the most part, I try to be conscious of it, but I do apologize if it, if it gets out of hand. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, I'm generally pretty good at answering questions, both on Reddit and Instagram. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first step is not actually a painting step, and it's more a um, tool step. The number one thing you're going to want to do if you're going to get into um, doing a lot of dry brushing, which is about 90% of this model, is to get yourself a good dry brush. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a brush that is meant for dry brushing. I don't have much experience with using the Games Workshop dry brushes, so I can't really, I, I can't really give a review of it. I do enjoy Games Workshop brushes. I used either that or Army Painter, and uh, both uh, are really good. Army Painter tends to be cheaper, and the brushes don't last as long, even with good care. Um, Games Workshop is obviously more expensive. But I, I get a lot of mileage out of my Games Workshop brushes, so it's really up to you. Uh, you don't, uh, I, I always tend to hear a lot of people say, you know, I'll, I'll paint better when I get more expensive brushes. So they try to go into like the Series 7 detail brushes. That's not necessarily a need. Um, I, I've been painting, like I said, five or six years and I've never owned a Series 7 brush. In fact, some of the best brushes I've used were relatively cheap. They just had, um, you know, good, uh, good bristles on them and I just took care of them. So really, I, I don't, especially when you're just getting into the hobby, don't worry about going super expensive. Go with something you're comfortable with. And that's always what I've done and I think that it kind of affects my work. Like this, for instance, is the dry brush I used for almost this whole model. And this is a um, Games Workshop, I believe this is a large basing brush. I could be wrong though. And this is what I used for pretty much 90% of the model. Uh, it started off as just a basing brush that I used for a lot of my Crimson Fist, but it started to, fortunately, because of my uh, neglect, started to fray out and kind of, you could see it's collected some paint in there. But honestly, it worked great for a dry brush. It had a nice angle to it, it had a nice edge, and it allowed me a lot of control. And I tend to like brushes that have frayed a little bit because they give a, uh, a variation of how the paint is going to land on the model. Another thing I can recommend for dry brushing is actually what's under me right now. These are shop towels. Uh, you can buy them at a lot of uh, home improvement stores. I buy mine from Home Depot. And it's great. They're super absorbent and they can last forever. I mean, this one, I'll move this over here. You can see the other side here from all my dry brushing here. I mean, it, it, these last forever and they're really nice, especially if you're drying brushes. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive than paper towel. I think these are $1.99 a roll. So they're a little bit more expensive, but they're great. They'll help um, pick off a lot more of that paint. They're kind of textured a little bit, which is nice but not too much. So I enjoy them and I recommend them. Uh, as far as tools go, I think that's pretty much all we, all you'll need. Um, I always recommend a very good fine detail brush. This is the Army Painter Precise Detail, I believe. Yes, uh, this is Army Painter Precise Detail. I own about five or six of these um, and I love these. Uh, there's not too much detail I can't do with these. so. Um, tools wise, that's pretty much it. Um, I do recommend also getting some sort of magnification device. I, I've been painting for five years and I don't use any sort of magnification and that is very much not good for you. You can, um, exhaust your corneas if you do paint for a long period of time, especially a lot of fine detail. Um, you can exhaust your corneas and have eye troubles, and I am already starting to have trouble focusing at long distances. So please, please, please buy some sort of magnification and save yourself trouble down the line. So uh, as far as tools go, that is it. So next I'll cover the first step of painting.
Okay, I will apologize ahead of time. I am more than likely going to butcher some of these names. I, like I said, I apologize. Uh, I'm a painter, not a reader. So, uh, you know, if that really bothers you, I am very much sorry. Feel free to send me a private message and yell at me, I guess. Um, so first step is going to be Mechanicus Standard Gray. And this is going to be your base coat. You have the choice of either painting this on or dry brushing it. I dry brushed it. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was kind of a pain. These base colors generally cover well, but I have a problem using them as dry brushes for dry brushing. Sorry. Um, I, 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 I tend to have a lot of issue with them covering. This was no exception. It took quite a bit to get this to the point where I was happy with it. And for this model, I actually didn't really cover much with it. Let's see if I can focus this in. You can actually still see along here a lot of the black. And basically I wanted to dry brush this to the point where I could still uh, still see some black because it's nice. It gives a lot of depth depth to the model. And it's kind of like painting a free color on there. So I basically dry brushed it to the point where I started to see gray. And I got a pretty good coverage of the model. I know that's kind of vague. I have kind of an example here. I am working on um, some jean stealers for a friend of mine. Let's see if we can get a nice focus in there. That's not bad. So you can see that there's still a lot of black in here. I'm, and I've already started on the second step with these. So it's, it's hard to say, but I would, I, I would generally go to the point where you can start to see gray. You do have the option of just painting on the gray, uh, the Mechanica standard gray that is. Um, that, that's something you could totally go for and you might enjoy that more. You might be able to get it done a little bit quicker. But if you're doing this for a whole army, I would recommend just dry brushing it and kind of going through the first the first step being the painful one because after this the dry brushes get a lot easier so you'll be able to pump through you know a whole group of gene stealers rather quickly so for this step you're just going to be laying down a base coat of that standard mechanicus gray and like i said i got to the point where pretty much i had I could start to see it and it was starting to build up and I went a little bit further than that. And that gave me uh, something I was happy with. So that pretty much concludes the first painting step and I'll kind of move straight into the next one if I could find my paint here. After that dried, I hit it with Dawnstone. And this is gonna be a fairly heavy dry brush. Now, the difference between a heavy and a light dry brush for me is pressure. Um, I see a lot of tutorials on how to do dry brushing, and they don't really go into too much pressure description. You're generally, when you're starting out, I would recommend always applying very low pressure. Just enough that you're starting to put paint on there. Because with a technique like dry brushing, you can only, you can only add, you can't subtract. And that, that can be very hard when you're first learning because you might go at it and kind of just hit it real hard and you'll get a very harsh color. But for something like this where you're doing a slow build, you're going to want to go low pressure to start. And that will help you quite a bit. You can see here that there's a lot I haven't covered yet. And that's just the slow buildup. You could definitely see it there. You could still see a lot of black and you can still see a lot of that standard Mechanicus gray. Um, for this Gene Stealer, it's a little bit different. The Gene Stealers have been kind of difficult for me to paint, to be honest. Um, so I'm still kind of working out the Gene Stealers, but you're going to want to start light and bring yourself up and bring yourself up to something you're comfortable with. Um, in the next step, we're going to do, um, do a wash. So if it's too harsh, you'll lose some of that harsh, harshness with the brush. 
um, with the wash, sorry. Um, so that will help quite a bit. So I will actually move on to that step right now. Okay, now on to uh, the third step now, and one of the easiest ones, uh, that is the wash step. Um, it's one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite steps in painting any model because it gives you a lot of depth for free. And um, if you've seen any of my other work, you can tell I am very familiar with this wash because it tends to be um, pretty much every model I paint is dark. I'll show you some examples here. These are, this is one of my Crimson Fist. You can see very, very dark. If I could get it, there's a nicer focus there. Thank you very much. So I tend to always work very dark and very gritty. Um, I think it fits the universe very well, and it's it, it looks really good on the board. So the wash is really simple. You're just going to dip your brush in there and put a nice wash over it. Um, word of caution, make sure that there's no water on your brush. Um, waters and washes can sometimes cause some issues, especially with drying. So try to avoid that. And try to avoid heavy buildup. I wish I had an example here of too heavy of buildup, but trust me, it's rough. Um, especially with Nolan oil, it can turn legitimately turn black. So just make sure you have a nice even coat of that wash on there, and it'll bring both of those colors we've already put down. It'll bring them down just a step, just enough that it's noticeable, and that's what we're going for. This whole painting for this patriarch is just a slow build up and that's why the end product ends up looking so good because it's not rushed um, this took me quite a bit of time to kind of build up that color and it shows um, it definitely gives a very natural look when something's built up um, over time so after that wash is done you're just going to want to give it a full dry Go read a book, play a video game, paint some other models. That's generally what I do. I have a nice kind of assembly line going. So that will uh, make sure that has a full dry and just kind of keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not pooling up. Okay, on to step four. And we're going back to the dry brushing now. Um, so up until now, we've put down the standard Mechanicus Gray. Then we've put down Dawnstone, and we've washed it. So we've brought it down to a more dull color. Now we're going to bring it back up a little bit more, and we're going to hit it with Dawnstone again. And it won't be super noticeable, but there's definitely a difference between the washed Dawnstone and the new Dawnstone you're applying. And for this dry brush, you're going to want to go a little bit lighter, but you're going to want to hit the edges. And you can see a lot of examples in that with this model where I hit, let me grab a little pointer here, where I focused on hitting the edges. And that'll make them stand out and it'll look really, really nice. You can see all in there where I tried to hit the edges as much as possible. And um, I achieve that mostly by applying a little bit more pressure when I'm coming along here. Let's see if I can give a good example of this. It's kind of hard to do this well. So I will just run it along here going this way. So I'm going uh, to be against the grain. So that will give you a good, uh, good hit on the edges. And it will come out really, really well. Um, like I said, lower pressure for this. You don't want you don't want it to be super heavy um, because you have a good base layer now. So now we're just building up a little bit to kind of highlight a lot of pieces that we want to hit. So after you're done with that, let it dry, let it sit for a while. Then you're going to put your last layer of the skin, which is going to be a Ministratum Gray. This is the one you want to be very, very careful with. I did a very light dry brush of this over the whole model after the um, after the previous layer of Dawnstone. This Administratum Gray is very, very light. And if you hit this too hard, 
it will it, it, it will be bright and it's very very noticeable um, so this is where you're gonna want to just lightly feather over the model and if there's a part of it that you're afraid that you might hit it too hard feel free to hit it with the Dawnstone um, Dawnstone is a little bit more forgiving uh, I've, I've found when dry brushing it so definitely if you're like oh that one part I'm afraid I'm gonna hit it and it's gonna be too bright then feel free to go back and hit it with the Dawnstone for things like hopefully I can get a good focus here too for things like the hands these are great for the administratum gray because it kind of makes him pop a little bit more he has all these tendons along his hands and that's something you want to be conscious of because you want those to stick out these can be very hard it can be very hard to get into these little crevices when you're especially when you're doing your base paint so you want these to kind of stick out and that's what i looked for when i was doing the dry brushing i wanted to find parts where it was like oh there's a little detail i want to make sure i hit that something like he has a little crack in his carapace there that's something that you just put a little bit more pressure and it'll stick out very well and it'll end up looking really nice and at that point you're pretty much done with your skin um, it's it, it's an easy technique and really it's just building it up slow over time and that's how you'll achieve uh, this look a lot of people actually thought this was blue uh, maybe it's just because of the iPhone quality um, the iPhone unfortunately has a tendency even with higher quality pictures to kind of uh, mesh a lot of colors together so maybe that's why it comes out blue I also was using a blue black be, blue backdrop for it so maybe that's why but this technique is super easy and if you find yourself struggling with it just keep practicing I mean you have um, if you have a bunch of sprue pieces like I got this here I'm working on a uh, storm shield here or a combat shield um, just paint a bunch of these up with your spray paint and you will um, uh, and just keep practicing that's the biggest thing you'll see a lot of people post work online and you'll be like oh I'll never get to that point where I'll never get to the point where people massively enjoy my work but you will it's just practice um, you know uh, a lot of the people you see who are up there especially making a lot of money doing commissions they just worked and worked until they got to the point where they are now and that's the biggest piece of advice I can give through all of these painting tutorials is just keep practicing and don't let other people's work discourage you let that be a um, let that be a good lesson for you uh, figure out what they do figure out what you like and don't like that's why I didn't straight just paint a model because I can sit here and paint by numbers and show you exactly what I did but then you're just copying my work you're not making it your own and that's what I want you to do with this tutorial is make it your own find a way that you like that maybe you prefer maybe you want to use um, Eschen gray for the base paint and then work your way up from there um, this hobby is all about personalization and I think that everybody should make every piece of work they do their own so that's my biggest tip for you is just keep practicing and you'll get to a point where you post work and people are asking you how you did that or telling you it's really good and it's a great feeling to be honest um, seeing comments of people telling me that um, their my work is really good or they're blown away that's what keeps me going and that's um, it, it it makes painting so much more fun when you know somebody's going to enjoy it so I will get off of my soapbox and I will uh, say happy wargaming and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback for me, please feel free to tell me. Um, I'm not a cinematographer. I've never really gone into the video tutorial area. So this is really just a trial of trying my best to have something that's at least watchable. Um, I do have other models I've painted. Um, these are my one of my flesh terrors. 
I have one of the Crimson Fists that I showed you earlier. So if anybody, if you, if you see something you like um, in the background, or um, I'll have a link to my imager profile and my Reddit, if there's anything that you see and you're like, how do you paint that? How do you do that specifically? I'd love to try to do a video tutorial on it. Um, I have a lot more free time now, so I am open to doing tutorials on pretty much anything. So um, I will conclude this video here. Hopefully I didn't talk too much and hopefully you learned something. So uh, all I could say is happy wargaming and practice, practice, practice. Thank you very much.